I'm nervous as hell. I'm nervous as hell, my hands are cold. I need to run them through hot water. I'm trying to go through everything in my head. Try not to mess up. Yeah, I'm nervous. Oof, I'm gonna try, man. I'm gonna try. You got this, man. 10 years ago when I was working on my debut album and I didn't really have a following, there was nobody to disappoint and that was kind of a nice thing because I just made the music I wanted to make. You know, I didn't really know much. I barely played any shows as a DJ. I didn't have that influence of an electronic music artist. And when I started working on the Clarity album, I had no idea what impact that would have on my career, my life, and where this journey would lead me to. Shake it up! I think my focus on the Clarity album was the musicality. You know, back then I was still kind of finding my lane and what I thought would be my lane would be to make electronic music that is very, yeah, classically inspired, but mainly just music driven, more so than production drop driven. I haven't really approached music like this before or after the album. It was just this period of time I had where I had a lot of time and I just got really creative and was thinking outside the box. I think the idea of playing a classical show as Zed started many years ago. I mean, I think I was in my parents' basement staying there and we were thinking about how cool it would be to do this because this is where I come from, not the orchestra world, but the classical piano world. But we never really had the right moment or opportunity or reason really to do it because it takes a lot of time. And I think the 10 year anniversary was kind of like, oh, it's around the corner. And I think that was the moment when my team and I were like, we need to do this, like now, now's a good time. team to help me transcribe my music into an orchestra form that players who have never heard my music before would be able to read and play. And Ben is a phenomenal orchestrator. I think also for him it was probably something different than what he usually does. I was listening to this album quite a bit, like around the time when it came out, and so when I got the call, I had to like contain my excitement because I was just like, oh my god, this is like, this is like perfect, this is right up my alley. And I tried to leave Ben as much freedom to go off tracks and rethink parts that he may want to orchestrate differently than I initially wrote. And then once I knew what the timeline was, I kind of choked a little bit because I was like, oh, that's a very short amount of time in order to get a lot of music arranged and orchestrated. From the time we decided to do this until the downbeat on performance day was three months. We jumped on a Zoom and we're kind of like broad stroke thinking, what are we going to do? How is this going to work? I will say one thing that I realized this morning. People don't actually know I'm not DJing. All we're saying is, that I am performing with an orchestra. There's not gonna be no electronic sound mm -hmm. at all? Zero. Okay, that's awesome. So... <laughs> <laughs> Maxime Eskenazi. Since last Saturday, when we start rehearsing with Zed, I'm Max, M-A-X-X, -X, to match the Z-E-D-D. -D. Well, I'm nervous because your field is a little different than ours, so I think that collaboration will give birth of something new and awesome. Zed's music was such that we thought this could make for a really great symphonic concert, but he had never done it before, so we yeah. knew that was an unknown factor. It was really, really, in a way, difficult show to put together because we're taking a media that is electrically driven and putting it in acoustical medium. And I was also just really excited for the challenge to try and bridge these worlds a little bit too, because that's what I like to do all the time, is do this sort of like cross-pollination of genres and styles. From our first Zoom, it was a constant back and forth of Ben basically creating a, a demo version for me to hear. You know, I would give him notes back and then he would go back and reorchestrate them. And we had like two different languages that we were speaking at the same time because I don't speak the correct terminology that he's in. Yeah, he plays. And not the last one. Right, yeah. I think it would be really cool if all of them play all together.
getting all of those notes was me basically figuring out what his ear is like. And his ear is very detailed and it's very precise. That chord, it's wrong. I wrote him, I, I do not know what's wrong, but there's okay. one like seven in the harmony or Before something. Before you go there, uh -huh. let me identify precisely where you start. And okay. I zoomed in and I was like, oh, there, there's a wrong note in the trumpets that I would have never caught. Um, if it hadn't been for his like very precise and careful attention to detail. That chord has a lingering harmony. That is the chord. That chord. Let's see what's playing in the... Even though we walked into a world in which Anton wasn't the most familiar, he wasn't the most knowledgeable, it really didn't take long before he was making his own musical adjustments inside of that ecosystem. I like this kind of language. The great thing too is like the people we worked with were very understanding of what he wanted to do. They were open, they were teachable. So it was cool, it was a learning experience for everyone. Clarity is the biggest hit, it makes sense to talk before that. Yeah. To me, the music should be speaking, not me. You're welcome to talk if you want to talk. What am I gonna say? Anton wrote this song when he was in Germany in his little room. <laughs> yeah. He calls his light, huh? There you go. And he's made it sound like yeah, a UFO. It's a different world. Totally different world. And Tony's been doing that for the last 10 years. And working with him was very humbling because he's very down to earth, very um, thoughtful. He came over to my house and we wanted to go through the orchestrations. I wanted to kind of show him what I was planning on playing. Next room. Next concert. <laughs> That's the Sunday concert. That's the Friday concert. <laughs> he was kind of reading the charts. We were listening back. And then sometimes he was like, oh, this is going to sound way better. Push one. Da -da -dum, da -da -dum. Oh, what? And if then the audience are still clapping, then we do an encore. <laughs> I mean, there's certain places that I'm looking and thinking I'm sweating. I mean, it's like... I'm scared too, trust me. <laughs> And if you're scared, I'm even more scared. And I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe we should just try it. Hey, everybody. How's it going? I took a little bit of a scenic crowd. Wanted to check out USC. Now I'm here. How are you? How's it going, nice to see you. Nice Pretty, to see good. You. Pretty good. And had never played with a full orchestra, so he really needed to immerse himself in that experience and really hear where everything was sitting. One, two, three. So my only rehearsal was those volunteers basically playing down the charts with me. Huge thanks to them because without them, I would have had no experience at all. <laughs> Way harder than I thought, to be completely honest. Way more difficult because I've been practicing with like a track that is always on beat. Once we start experimenting, with the orchestras of USC and Colburn, we find out more things that needs to be changed. Because some parts live from their production like we talked about, and we don't have the production, so we have to rethink the production. We have to take the rhythms. As far as timing goes, he's very much a perfectionist, so he had to figure out where he should sit within all of that. Um, maybe part of the exercise will be to identify the pieces where we run risk of spreading too far apart, yeah. and then just helping with something. It's a really different approach than me sitting in a studio and being able to do it exactly how I want it. To get to feel the same energy from just all humans doing it live is awesome. That's like such a cool feeling. <laughs> Guys, thank you. Thank you all so much. Three, two, one. Monitor adjustments. This is your world over here. Oh, that's going to be because of all the people involved, 
all the space needed, the logistics, the operation itself, our resources weren't in a way that would allow us to lock down for a couple of weeks and just rehearse this. The second rehearsal with the professional orchestra was the day of the show, about three hours before the show. It's crazy to me, but in the world of proper professional orchestra players, they just sit down, they get a chart, and they just play it down. Some of these like really quick 16th note arpeggiations, the kids from the USC, they're like, yeah, it's possible with a little bit of practice, but <laughs> the ones who are actually gonna be playing it will have never practiced it. So that's the, that's the part that makes me really nervous. It was supposed to be a harp, and I think we figured out that it's gonna be a little too hard for the harp to play. So I'm gonna likely have to play it alone. For three minutes. <laughs> The instrumental songs were surprisingly hard to do because when I have a singer, I want the singer to shine and I want to build around the singer. But when there is no singer, I just go nuts. My goal behind the song Stash was to make one part, listen to it, and then create whatever I wanted to feel next. It's like a mini journey. Nothing is repeating. It's always evolving. It's changing. I just realized laying out those songs, they weren't all meant to be club songs. A lot of it was just electronic music. So we shouldn't speed up. I was. I didn't know how to slow down. You well. You. Look at me and slow If I say, if you see it here, <laughs> yeah, slow down. Slow down. <laughs> now, now, if one person fucks up, it can literally cause everything to crumble. It's just like one percussionist has to be off by a beep, and then everything is gonna be off. So we're sitting there, you know, the doors are opening in two hours, and we realized that we had to make adjustments on the fly. We were changing things to the very last moment. With many, many concerts, we tend to lower that level of adrenaline to very minimal to survive. But today, it kicked out again, the, the needle. Is that on top of that? Whether it's a ride or it's a click or, I'm, or is it the one? You're my click because I can't watch it because I don't know. We were like hawks, me and uh, Anton, listening to each other. Or, you know, I kind of feed off his energy, but then I would lead in terms of tempo and, and, and rhythm, and then he would take what I'm playing and basically lead the entire rest of the orchestra. We almost became one rhythmical body, so we can project that to the orchestra. I mean, it's been a, not a marathon, it's been a sprint to that final line and that first downbeat of the concert. Pretty much we've been changing to the very last moment, which is absolutely nerve wracking. There was a part of me like maybe two minutes before the concert began. It was like, you know, we really haven't accounted for the audience here. You know, like when everyone started to sit down and you're like, do they even know what they're getting into right now? There were definitely people in the crowd, and I know this because some of my friends were next to them, that were like, this is pretty cool, but when is he like starting his set?
was like really thrilling to see like all the fruits of our label just like blossom on stage. Especially to see the crowd go wild during Stay the Night was just like great, it was touching. <laughs> you see some fans go from rave mode to like orchestral mode and yet it'd be seamless. It was, a, it was like an experiment for a minute. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Honestly, I'm speechless. This was such an unbelievable experience. And I think 10 years ago, I said my goal is for my first album, for me to be able to look back and just be as proud of it today as I was 10 years ago. I think it's safe to say I am just, if not more proud of it today, um, thanks to Maxime, Ben, Matt, and Adam, who are part of the team. Um, I guess we're gonna do one more. Let's hear some noise for these wonderful players. I mean, anytime you do something where you don't actually know how it's gonna turn out, and it turns out to be great, is pretty darn satisfying. You just saw it at the end of the concert. I mean, people are on their phones, standing, going wild. It's, it's meshing of our world, so I thought that was, truly special for me. It was really awesome to see that the instrumental kind of carries everybody into this song that they are used to. Once the seal was broken and people realized that it's cool to sing along, it was, it was magical. they're just reacting to the music and they're not reacting to a marketing campaign they're not reacting to this that and everything they're reacting to the core musicianship see what's ready to keep going like i've seen your your orchestra is leaving we have no more songs <laughs> other and become chords and then the structure that you you know built around them working through this classical arrangement it reminded me of what I wanted to feel making this album and kind of retaught me to try and create this next album in a similar fashion where I you know just try to approach it from a from a aspect of thinking about it as least as I can I think this was a really good reminder of getting back to that space where all he needs is himself and his ideas, you know? 